Panyagapani, the son of a doctor, had decided to take up a big position in the government. From the day he met Vandiyathevan, this desire had been burning and growing in his heart. He had not been very successful in some of his previous endeavours. Nandini Devi seemed to show him some mercy. Later the Queen of Pavur completely forgot him. When Kundave went to see Devi, he did not even face him properly. When he accused Vandiyadevan of being a lonely at the gate of the Palayare Palace, he was beaten and nothing was gained. But when Prime Minister Anuradha sent him to Kadakare to capture the Queen and bring him back, he decided that now he would surely rise to the great position. As long as he somehow gets the job done right, there's nothing he can't achieve with the grace of the Prime Minister. Then first of all one should see Vandiyathevan. Then the arrogance of Punghuali should be suppressed. Panyagapani went to Kadakar after building these sky forts. There he conquered Rakamal at Kadakare. She fell in love with him. She talks to him about their efforts, thinking he is from the danger crowd. With her help he found the mute queen and brought him to the gates of the Tanjore fort. Panyagapani's soul was working throughout this journey. Tried to learn secrets about the mute queen. When he was locked up in the dungeon one day, he remembered the details of a madman there. Then they seemed to him the ravings of a madman. Now he thought there was truth in what he said. When the palanquin on which the mute queen was riding came near the Tanjore fort, did not the storm and rain fall on him and a tree fell on him. After healing from his injuries, he went to see Prime Minister Anuradhar. By then the most important events had taken place. The mute queen gave her life to save the emperor's life. Kari Kaler was murdered and died. The whole country was buzzing about who would get the title next. The fort of Tanjore came under the control of Khajumbalar Velars. Word spread that the Pula Vetareus and their petty chieftains were gathering forces. There were signs that a major civil war might break out. In such a turbulent state, the doctor's son Panyagapani went to see the chief minister, Anuradhar. Deep in his love, Brahmareya, who was deep in the ocean of anxiety, did not want to waste time talking too much with Panyagapani. He wanted to give him a gift and send him away as soon as he had accomplished what he had set out to do. But when Panyagapani began to tell him about the madman he had met in the dungeon, his heart turned to him. Anuradha was intrigued when asked if the madman knew where in Sri Lanka the ancient bell crown of the Pandya kingdom and the golden harem allegedly gifted by Devendran were. Attempts have been made since the time of Parintaka emperor to find the bell crown and the diamond harem but to no avail. Until they were captured, someone would claim to belong to the Pandian dynasty. Anuradha knew about the midnight drama at Tirapurampuyam where a little boy was mounted on a Pandya Singh Adana and crowned through Alvar Kadayan. Some people like this will leave from time to time. They will be helped by the kings of Elam and the Chera kings. If the Pandian country was somehow annexed to the Chola Empire, the Chola Emperor himself would have to be crowned in Madurai as well. During the Vaibhava, the Chola Emperor should wear the ancient crown of the Pandya dynasty and the diamond harem. All these things were decided by Anuradha in advance. It was because of this that Anuradha sent to every Chola general who invaded the country of Ela to find and bring back the aforesaid Manamakudam and Ratna harem. Till then not even one person has succeeded in Akariyam. Isn't it only natural that Anuradha Brahmaraya would be interested in love when he heard that someone in the dungeon now knows where they are? The doctor's son also gave another message. That piqued the Prime Minister's curiosity and concern. Panyagapani said that the madman told him that he knew a great secret about the Chola dynasty and that a prince claiming the Chola throne was not really a Chola dynasty. After hearing all this, Anuradha first decided to go to the underground prison himself to see the madman. Then he changed his mind. If he goes there, questions will arise as to why and for what purpose. Malayaman and Velar did not fully trust Anuradha. They had assumed that he was supporting Madhurandhagan's party as per the wish of the emperor. If they go to the dungeon, they will have some new doubts. They will also think that they are going to see Sam Bavarier. After thinking about this aspect, Anuradha decided to use the son of the physician himself. He gave his signet ring and told him to go to the dungeon and see the madman. 
Panyagapani went to see a Bathyakaran like that. He was overjoyed when he saw Vandiyadeva locked up in the next room. He stopped for a while at the door of that room and gave a speech to Vandiyathevan. Vandiyathevan did not talk to him. So he got angry and scolded him well and went to the next room. In retrospect he realized that he was not really a madman. Then, he asked about the Pandiyamanamakudam, Ratnaharam. The madman immediately fell silent. He also refused to tell about the secret of the Chola dynasty. Get me a release order first. I'll tell you later. He said that. Panyagapani came back and told the Prime Minister about his defeat. He said that if he is freed, he will surely get results. It seemed appropriate to the Prime Minister as well. He felt that a madman who spoke dangerous secrets should not be kept in prison in such a state of confusion about the right of kingship. He wanted to bring him to his palace and find out the truth. Thereupon Kajum Balar looked at Velar and told him this news. Pariya Velar had no objection to the release of a prisoner who had been imprisoned many years ago by the chief minister at the whim of the chief minister. So Abhayakara wrote an order to release the prisoner. After buying it, Panyagapani proudly went to the dungeon. At first Vandiyathevan stood at the door of the room and said that he had brought an order to release him. Vandiyathevan believed it to be true and started thanking him. Immediately Panyagapani showed his true nature. He scolded Vandiyathevan well and said, Your freedom is above the mulberry tree at the corner of the crossroads. Then he went into the next room and spoke softly to the madman. He untied the chains that tied him to the wall. Here I have bought you a release order. Will you tell me the secrets you know now? He asked. Vidya's son wanted to know the secrets himself before taking him to Prime Minister Anuradha. The madman did not seem very enthusiastic about his release. He didn't seem in a hurry to leave either. I don't know who is so confident in Panyagapani's word. What? What? Who gave the order? Are you sure to get out of prison? Will they let you out of the fort? He was listening. Suddenly some stones fell from the adjacent wall. Panyagapani looked back and saw Vandiyadeva standing behind him. Binagapani hastily took the knife from his waist. Vandiyadeva pounced on him and held him tightly by the neck. He also knocked the knife from his hand. The two rolled and fought for a while. At that moment the madman picked up a chain hanging from the wall and put it around Panyagapani's neck and tightened it. 